you thought you were going to join the gym, get big and strong, get the body of your dreams, and get all the girls you ever wanted. In reality, you get a bunch of attention from dudes, women still don't really mess with you that heavily, and now you have crippling body dysmorphia. Chest up, shoulders back. Welcome to Revival Fitness, everybody, your home for gains and brains. And today, fellas, we're going to have a chat about the age-old question when it comes to guys in the gym. How important are muscles really when it comes to getting women? And I've seen some bigger channels talk about this recently, guys. I've had a number of experiences both directly and indirectly relating to this myself. So in this video, I'm going to give just my own personal experience and opinions on this matter. I'm going to tell you guys what I've been told by girls, what I've observed with girls. With that said though, guys, if that is the only reason you're in the gym or if that is your main motivator in the gym, of course we all want to look better for women. Like, of course that's a nice benefit and a perk. But if your primary driver, if the reason you get up off your ass to go to the gym is to get more women bra, don't be surprised if you phase out of this lifestyle relatively quickly. If you're somebody who can't make your intentions known with women, if you can't break that threshold, you're always getting friend zoned, maybe your face is all wonky, right? You know, harsh truths here, guys, it is what it is. But in those cases, you're going to be facing an uphill battle when it comes to dating, and muscles are not going to be a magic fix for those problems, no matter what some people online are going to tell you. Now with that in mind though, muscles are more than likely going to help, and there's really no drawbacks of getting a more aesthetic physique, more strength, more size. I think it was Mark Ripito, at least he's the first person I heard say this, stronger people are harder to kill and more useful in general. So keep those things in mind. This is not a magic fix to your problems, but it is definitely going to provide you a boost in potentially more ways than one, which we're going to discuss in this video. So when it comes to dating guys, especially in the modern social media era, there's really no way around this. Looks are going to be the first thing that women notice about you. It's also the first thing we notice about them. All right, anybody who's gonna come on here and try to deny that looks, at least on the onset, are the most important thing, you're pretty crazy. All right, unless a girl is only interested in you because she can clearly see that you're rich and or famous with a lavish lifestyle she can kind of dive into and likely exploit. Looks are what get feet in the door, at least on the front end. And with that in mind, guys, if your looks are not up to par with where they could be, you're going to struggle more than you should with dating, and it's already a massive uphill battle for the average guy today. And that is why I am proud to tell you that this video is sponsored by Tiege Hanley. They're going to help you get your skin and your face looking right and they've already done the same for me. And the best part is they make the entire process uncomplicated for guys like you and me who wanna get the results of a skincare routine without having to obsess over it, like a lot of these girls do. So I would recommend that you look into their level one system to start, which comes with all the basics you need. We have a daily face wash to get rid of excess dirt and grime and oil from the skin. We have an exfoliating scrub used two times a week to get rid of dead skin cells that accumulate, especially if you're very active and sweat a lot. We have a morning AM moisturizer with a hint of SPF in it to protect your skin from the sun and keep it moisturized throughout the day. And also a PM moisturizer to keep your skin hydrated throughout the night. So with every order you get, you are going to receive an instruction card in the box that tells you when to use each product how much to use, and in what order they should be applied. I have been using Tiege Hanley's products myself for a couple months now, guys. I can personally vouch for the fact that they work, but don't just take my word for it. You can find over 5,000 five-star reviews on their website with testaments from guys all over the world who have given them a try as well. And because Tiege Hanley is sponsoring this video, guys, they are offering you, the viewers of this channel, a fantastic deal. Click the link in the pinned comment or the first link of the description to receive 30% off of your first box, plus a free gift with that order. So what you're seeing on the screen now is a photo of me in college 
I believe this was my senior year. I'd been lifting for a couple years at this point. I was, what, 155 pounds, maybe 160. You can see my pencil neck in this picture. My hair is all crazy. I had some muscle definition, right? But I was far from being big. I was still fitting in small size shirts at this point. I got more cat, for lack of a better term. At this point in my life, guys, still couldn't bench 185 to save my life than I have before or since. I was at a point in college, guys, I was getting it on like a weekly basis, one to two new women a week. The fitness industry, hardcore fitness industry, is very disconnected from the average populace. You guys have to understand, man, to the general person, 15% body fat with a little semblance of an ab line is ripped. Then you go on YouTube Fitness, if you're anything above 10% body fat, you're fat. Medically speaking, they think you're fat. If you're 12% or above, you're practically obese by social media fitness standards. Like, the disconnect is massive. Now, people online now say that dudes who are under 6'2 simply can't get women at this point. That's like basement dweller talk happening, all right? I'm just under six foot myself. I've had numerous women in my life. There's other guys who are even shorter than me who have success with women. So don't fall into these tropes now that are very common that, oh, if you're under this height, you can't get women. If you don't look like this, if you don't have abs, etc. That is spoken like true guys who've never actually been with women. And it's funny too, because if you will commonly look at who women are crushing over at the current point in time, oftentimes it's dudes with very average looking physiques. So this whole notion that women go insane over massive muscles, some of them do, right? There's gonna be a sect. It's like the bell curve, right? There's gonna be a sect of women at the tail end who just don't want muscles at all. Some of them might be grossed out by muscles. They might even be into the whole overweight dad bod style, which they might be exaggerating that too to get resources. Keep that in mind, right? Then in the middle of the bell curve, there's gonna be women who are like, eh, muscles are cool. I like the swimmer's body, maybe a little bit bigger, but nothing professional bodybuilding caliber or above. We'll talk about that too in a second. And then at the tail end, there might be the women who totally fetishize muscles, like the women you see dating pro bodybuilders and these massive dudes. But again, that's on the tail end. Generally speaking, guys, the average woman is not going to be into guys who are on the Olympia stage. Don't fall into that trap either, that just getting bigger and bigger and bigger is going to attract more women. There's a classic meme, I'm gonna try to find a picture of it, but basically it's like whenever you start lifting what you think is going to happen, you think a bunch of girls are gonna be gawking over you, then in reality it's a bunch of gym bros like, nice pecs bro, nice traps bro, nice delts bro. So broadly speaking guys, the more extreme your physique becomes, whether that's becoming like a total bodybuilding mass monster, or if you're gonna become one of these dudes who's 7% body fat year round. That's another thing too, because women do like abs. They'll tell you straight up they like abs. But if you're gonna be this ripped all the time, year round, most women are not into that. So if you wanna talk about the physique that is going to generally attract the most women possible, you're gonna commonly hear guys say the swimmer's physique. So that's on the leaner side, wider shoulders, probably abs. I'd say that's a good general rule. Leg day skipping is like this meme, but it's totally not a meme. The vast majority of guys in gym skip legs or they completely half-acidly train their legs. The average dude who just goes to the gym, especially casually speaking, they just wanna go get an arm pump and a chest pump and that's it, maybe work on their abs a little bit. I have a client right now, guys, Every time I see him, I'm like, did you train yesterday? Yeah. What did you do? Uh, incline bench and curls. Every single time. Most guys, if they just go for a five minute jog once or twice a week, they think that's training their legs. If you believe that women aren't attracted to muscular legs, or guys will even go really far and say like, well, I don't want my legs to be big because it makes my member look bigger, all this other nonsense, right? If you believe that avoiding leg training is going to help your chances with women, you're mistaken. All right, if you're a guy who has a clearly built physique, especially like your back is nicely sized, your chest and arms, but then you have these tiny legs, that just doesn't even look good, aesthetically speaking. And I've been with a number of women guys who have complimented my legs. I had one girl tell me straight up, she was like, I would not seriously date a guy who skips leg training. I would say more often than not, if you're one of these dudes who's a human martini glass, you're probably gonna get made fun of by women more so than embraced by them. That's something else a lot of people don't get about the whole muscle thing. It shows that you have discipline and work ethic and that you're committed. Beyond just how physically appealing it might be, 
You might come off as a protector, more assertive, that type of thing. There's also the mental aspect of girls appreciating that you are so committed to your craft, so to speak. So the muscle that I've been complimented on the most in my life is the arms. And girls don't really make a discrepancy. They don't really say, oh, your biceps or your triceps or your shoulders. They commonly will just say the arm and they'll feel up my entire arm. And also too, guys, once again, don't think that you have to have these shredded, veiny, ripped up arms for the girl to be into it. Whenever I was higher body fat, guys, I didn't have much veinage happening in my arms. I still got a lot of compliments on my arms. Now the next thing, this is a bit controversial, especially among the leg day skippers, but my guys who have gotten this compliment can attest to it. It's the butt. Women have told me repeatedly, guys, that I have a nice ass. It is what it is. It's kind of funny. I don't really know what to say to that whenever they tell me that. But I have gotten compliments on that on more than one occasion from girls that are in the gym and girls that don't even go to the gym that much. And even whenever you're wearing normal clothes, like sweatpants, shorts, jeans, the girls can see your butt, guys. They can definitely see it. So again, if you're one of these martini glass looking dudes, you have your pancake ass and toothpick legs, the guy who's got a more holistically strong body, unless you're just insanely more handsome than him, if you're on the same playing field, roughly speaking, with looks, he's probably gonna win out. And then in third place, I would say abs. We know the cosmetic and commercial appeal of abs. It's extremely popular. Every day I scroll through Instagram, it's just another massive batch of dudes and women at this point with shredded up six pack abs. Abs are almost at the point now where they're like tattoos. Like they're so common now and played out that it's not even like cool anymore to have them. It's like, oh, you got a sleeve tattoo also? You got a six pack too? It's like, whatever. That's kind of interesting for me because you can see the tank top here. I've kind of built my brand on the fact that I don't want to be lean all the time. Maybe I should just get to like 18% forever, 20% and just wear a tank top, show the arms off. Doesn't sound too bad to me. But generally speaking, women are going to like your abs and keep this in mind too, guys. If you're roughly 12 to 15%, maybe even a little bit above, and you have a strong developed, not extremely ripped, but a defined core, that is ripped to the average girl and to the average guy. Don't stress out over being shredded all the time. If you're shredded all the time, you're going to get more attention from guys than girls, and this is not really a debate. I have gotten compliments on my forearms, namely whenever girls would talk about how veiny my forearms are, especially if I'm like gripping onto something. And I've even gotten a couple compliments on my chest. Not many, I'd say chest is on the lower rung of this spectrum. Mainly it's girls complimenting the chest hair whenever it's grown in, because they can run their teeth through it and rest their head on it. But that's really it. Ultimately though, guys, your physique as a whole represents who you are, so don't obsess over one single muscle group or only the mirror muscles. And as mentioned earlier, guys, I think at least right off the bat, your face is the most important thing. Your height's going to be correlated to that too. And I would say the more muscle you can build without going into like bodybuilder size territory, if you take two guys who are equal in the face, roughly equal in height, and guy B is bigger and obviously lifts more than guy A, I would say for the most part, guy B is going to get more women. Also personality too. I know a lot of the black pill guys scoff at personality and stuff, but if you're a big, strong guy who obviously lifts weights, but you're still weird and socially awkward and timid and all the other stuff we talked about, you can't assert yourself or make your intentions known, you're still going to struggle. And one last tip before we wrap up here, if you are into girls who are a little bit more muscular, who are more likely to be into muscular guys who go to the gym regularly, like I am, very easy tip here, but a lot of guys still neglect this. You wanna meet the girls who go to the gym. It's funny whenever guys who are very into gym life still obsess over going to the bars and clubs and stuff to run volume, bro. And it's like, dude, you're probably not gonna find a serious long-term partner, especially a girl who's committed to the gym and healthy eating and stuff, who goes to the bars and clubs all the time. Very unlikely. It's not impossible, but you're probably gonna find the people that you are gonna best connect with doing the things that you like the most. And I've said before, guys, I don't want you to be the PUA guy in your gym, harassing people, getting kicked out and stuff. But I do have a video, I'll put it up in the top corner, 
how not to meet girls at the gym. Don't be scared to shoot your shot if you are right now. Watch that video, watch my other content related to this. You can shoot your shot in a respectful way and not make it some big theatrical presentation. So this has been it guys. Thank you for watching this video. Once again, shout out to Tish Hanley for sponsoring. 30% off and a free gift in the link down below. Big shout out as always too to the Patreon supporters and the channel members. The link's down below for custom coaching, consultations, and workout programs to best fit your needs and circumstances. And I will catch you guys next time.